boom. Just like that, it is another week. Happy, happy Tuesday, people. We don't have a lot of time together this week uh, because I will be gone towards the end of this week for one week. There's a lot of weeks in that opener, so I'm sorry. I'm just saying weeks a lot. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another Caesar Live. Welcome to, uh, as you guys know from the event that was set up for this, this is another Master Crafter week. And as I told you last week, I'm very excited uh, for this Master Crafter Live. And I'm very excited for who we're bringing on because you might not realize, I'm just going to turn around so you can get a reveal of obviously the back of my jersey, but you not, might not realize that there is some pretty incredible things that we've put up in the set periodically that you may not have seen or you may not even notice that it was there until right now uh, that this person helped to create and built and figured out the right path uh, to create some really, really cool, uh, inspiring artwork for us. So I'm excited to share that with you. I'm excited to share him with you as well. Uh, but let's first go over to, we're going to announce the room like we always do. We're going to go over to you guys in the comments. So make sure you're chiming in, hit some uh, hearts, some likes. Let us know where you're chiming in from, where you're watching from. Uh, here in Michigan right now, it's a little rainy. So I need some good, positive, sunny vibes. I need summertime. I think we're all ready for summer right now at Caesar, and we're excited. Maybe we're going to start doing, Trev, we might have to do some lives outside in the summer. I'm not in, I'm not in agreement. <laughs> hear me. There we go again. Yeah, I would most definitely like some summertime lives. I mean, we're, we've, spoken like, for, we've spoken for years about um, going outside, and I think, I think maybe we deserve to go outside for I once. I think it's time. This summer, we're going to... I think gonna, it's about time. I, okay, we'll commit to you guys right now, this summer, at the very minimum, at the minimum, we're going to do five lives that are not in the studio space, whether they're outside, they're in new locations here at the building, they're in locations off. It would be cool if I could do it. We could do like a live at the zoo, like making merch that, for the otters. I mean, that, that <laughs> would be, be so um, cool to do something like that. We that, would have to probably sign a couple waivers there. We might have I to mean, sign a couple. Yeah. yeah. There might, and we might have to shell out a couple of, what do, oh, crap. I should have seen, I should have said an animal that I know what they eat. What do otters eat besides fish? Fish. Maybe we'll bring some fish with us. I always feel like they're cracking. Never mind. Anyway, all right, cool. I think the, I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to do some independent ba research. <laughs> there we go. Oh, Trev's I gonna, knocked my mic. I'm sorry if you heard that. Trev's going to do, do some otters, independent research for us. Let's see. Otters eat. Asian small and Cape clawless otters eat snails and other mollusks. Okay. Smooth otters will rely on large, large fishes. Okay. I love the plural Fishes. of fish. Fish eye. Uh, as their primary food source. Uh, Eurasian otters mainly eat small fishes and, okay. and amphibians. So what we need to do is we need to, your guys' help. Maybe we gotta we gotta pool together some fish, no pun intended, water pool, blah blah blah, and then we can do some at the zoo. But I'm gonna commit to five off location lives this summer for you guys because I think it's fun when we can get into other environments and and have fun with the 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 world around us, and hopefully we can create something that's pretty cool and uh, hint hint for the future sustainable. That's one we'll do. All right. Anyway, so you guys already heard from Trev. You know he's hitting the ones, twos, the threes, the fours. Everybody knows the salt and the syllables, the, the master of, of words, the whatever else terms that we decide. Actually, the, gr the grammatical gatekeeper. The grammatical, <laughs> the grammatical gatekeeper, as Trev says it. Our very own hanging out in the comments with us is Adam Sneath. Say hi, Adam. Hey, everyone. And thank All you, right. Trevor, for that new title. I'm using that one from now on. <laughs> I like that. That's going to be in his, his email signature. Coming to you soon. All right, so anyways, uh, Anna is out uh, for another live. Uh, she is having some fun on her last couple days of vacation, so we're not going to bother her too much, but I bet you any money Judy's hanging out because, you know, she likes to hang out with us, Anna. Anyway, uh, let's go over to the comments and uh, see who is watching in Adam and hanging out with us and where they're from. All right, let's see. I'll start on YouTube. Okay. Um, we have Royalty Design from Sinclair Shores, Michigan. Oh, you're right up the road from us. Sweet. Yep. We have Carol Saint from Alabama. Like it, like it. Hello, hello. Uh, Kristen Sensi from Texas. Hello, hello. Uh, let me hop on over to Facebook awesome, real awesome. quick. We got, some, we got some new, sounds like a couple new people on YouTube right now. We got some vets that hang out with us every single week and maybe some people in between. So uh, we love, we love when you guys watch too as well. So thank you. And we also have Cheryl from uh, Missouri. Cool. Um, Connie. Hewitt, who says, if you come to Orlando, you can live with her in the sunshine. Listen, I'll be in Miami next week. Oh. Well, Friday, I'll be in Miami. Maybe I'll see you, see you around the bend. <laughs> All right. Was that, not, was that corny to say? Was that, I, I like your, I like your I was like, 
Yeah, I actually have a picture when I was seven. Just we're gonna bring on our guest here. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're gonna go through obviously comments as we go, but I do have a picture, and maybe we'll throw it up on the next live that I do of me at like seven years old, and I was doing this Elvis impersonation. I had that same look, and I got a solid photo of it thanks to uh, my friend Callen's mom when we were in high school. Thank you, Mrs. Roberts, for doing that. Anyway, all right, let's bring on our guest. Let me stop talking. We've done enough stalling. I'm super excited about this guest. This week's master crafter. Showing us a, a really incredible, uh, I, mean, I don't even want to give away the project, but a really incredible project. Much, uh, not to mention, I'm going to actually be completing this project. Uh, potentially, we'll see. I will see how far we go with this one. But it is none other than a very own Cortez. Look at it, he's just strolling in. What's hello, up, hello, man? Hello. How are you, brother? Good news. All right, cool. No, listen, this is your week. We're having some fun, but first, we should probably just get some of the basics out of the out of the way okay. kind of explain what you do here at caesar and then uh how long you've been here and then uh we'll start to explain some of our project that we're going to be doing all right so my name is cortez ellis I'm a graphic artist here at caesar this year will make three years uh but yeah i started in january of 2022. nice nice and so if you guys have ever seen or you get a chance to see i know that we highlighted in your video as well, but we have a really cool mural that's upstairs that is literally in, well, I mean, how big was the wall? Do you remember the measurement of the wall? Was it 20 feet? 19? Wide? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. It was way more than that. Yeah, yeah. 40, maybe? Okay, 40, 40 feet? feet? That's way, way more than I even thought, double what I said. But 40 feet wide, and there was an incredible uh, mural that was done. But what I want you to explain, if you don't mind, I want you to explain kind of your process with it as we're, we'll grab our stuff out so we can start making, but Kind of explain your process with that because you did have a very unique approach to like being able to actually create that artwork on the wall mm -hmm. up there. So my approach was I wanted to use things that we use here at Caesar for everyday application, everyday life, um, things that you'd even use at home that you could get, you know, to make anything with the vinyl that we have here. But uh, the wall, I wanted to make things being a perspective, I wanted things to come out at you, go in, just give it some depth instead of something just, that was just on a flat wall. Yeah, so, yeah, that's sweet. And then even the way like that you had set that up too, I, I saw that you'd taken a picture of the wall, kind of sticky noted the entire wall so you yep. could get your measurements across. Yes, Which yes. was really incredible. I think I thought it was a really unique way to like set up a large scale design mm -hmm. uh, or the process. Right, yeah, so instead of getting a, a projector and projecting the image on the wall, which would have probably been 30,000 times easier and faster. Uh, <laughs> I just went with the method that I'd used before on some murals and some walls. Um, and I just put random sticky notes on the wall, mm -hmm. took a picture of the wall with the sticky notes, took my art in the vector form, and just kind of laid it over the picture, turned the transparency down, and just kind of followed the lines. Just followed the lines yep. all the way through. It's, yep. Well, it's an incredible one. And I know, like I said, this week, when the video goes out, um, that will also be in there as well, so you can kind of get a glimpse of what that wall looks like. It's incredible. We've seen it in a lot of other things, and honestly, it would be a cool backdrop for a live. So maybe one of those lives that we do off location could be that one. You want us to shift over a little bit? Cool. Listen, I always push. It's my bad. I always push people like out of the way because I'm used to standing right here. So all right, cool. So here's what we're gonna do. I've committed to each of these Master Crafter weeks using none other than our handy dandy Mr. Homeyer. Okay, yep. just to show people that our products can be applied with simply a home iron, but I'm gonna let you kind of lay out your project a little bit here All right. um, and kind of show the people this project that you're gonna be doing and then we'll start putting it together, All right. which would be cool. Uh, I'm gonna actually put this right up top here. Okay. We need that eventually. And I'm gonna take this on off. Now while Cortez is kind of getting his pieces in place, why don't we run over to the comments really fast, see who's chiming in at him. <laughs> Let's see, we have... <clears throat> Diana from Olympia, Washington, saying hello. Hello. Um, also says hello, Cortez, specifically. Okay. Hello, hello. Um, Marta Hochelle. Sorry if I messed up your last name. Um, hello, Patrick and Cortez and all the Caesar crew. Hey, hey, friends. Over on Facebook, we have what looks to be the entire graphics department. <laughs> Tune in. <laughs> What looks to be is the entire graphic department is banded together to make you nervous on a live, is what it is. That, that sounds, mm. sounds about right. Sounds about right. <laughs> That's awesome. All righty, cool. Now, also, too, if you guys have any questions, if you have questions about artwork, you have questions, obviously, about material and stuff, during the course of this 
five where we're just kind of making some projects, having some fun together. Make sure that you drop all of those questions and we'll be able to get those answers for you as well. Uh, we do have a question um, from Christine who yeah. wants to know if we can post a picture of the mural wall. Of course, yeah. Yeah, we yep. can definitely make sure. Um, actually, do you want to do that when you go upstairs? Yeah. Snap a quick photo of it, throw it in the group. Yeah, so yeah. make sure that if you're already not a part of the Caesar North America support group, make sure that you join the Caesar North America support group over on Facebook. Uh, Cortez will make sure after the live to snap a quick photo of the mural so you guys can see that, that incredible piece of artwork. So what do you got here? So we're dealing, uh, which is actually interesting. I didn't realize. Obviously, I know all your guys' artwork, but didn't mm -hmm. put two and two together that you have an anchor. Yeah, I was going to. I, I yep. literally have an anchor. <laughs> I was, I was going to point that out. I was going to point that out. I, was, uh... I just noticed that. So what I'm going to do, because this is actually a little tip that I kind of got from Cortez as I was watching him uh, create this this front of the jersey, which you can see he's got it on as well as on the back um, over here too on the mannequin. But it seemed to be a lot easier to split up some of the design by cutting some of the letters. Mm -hmm. And really, it was only the S that had to kind of be over that seam itself, right? right? OK, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and cut some of that up uh, so that we can get started here. Okay. <clears throat> awesome, awesome. Uh, how long, let me ask you this. How long have you been doing? Uh, how long have you been a graphic designer for? Why was, what was the reason why you even started? With that? Uh, so I've been, I guess, officially a graphic designer for I went up on four or five years now, mm -hmm. um, and the main reason was because I wanted to put whatever I was drawing, uh, spray painting, whatever digital art, yeah. on something that I could wear every day for anybody to see out in the world. So nice. that was the main reason I wanted to be a graphic designer. I like that. I like that a lot. Now, were you always a, were you always like an artsy kid as a, when you were a kid, or was, I, it something that, was it something that kind of caught the bug later in life? No, so I wasn't I wasn't an artsy fartsy kid yeah, yeah. growing up. It was more of just <laughs> pencil and paper. Uh, yeah. Anything that I saw on TV, cartoon wise, anime, mm -hmm. Boomerang, Cartoon Network, sometimes Nickelodeon, Ooh, Disney. Shout out, yeah. Uh, any of those cartoons that I liked, I really wanted to draw them and make them look exactly how you would see them on TV. Nice. So, okay. That's how it's funny enough because my only claim to fame ever is doing, uh, or my only artwork claim to fame, which 99.9% .9 of people in the office, I've exhausted this artwork already, <laughs> is Roadrunner was my first one that I wanted to like attempt to mimic, okay. you know what I mean, in real time. And I always thought that it was really cool to, uh, to be able to do those kind of things. You got to head out? <laughs> yeah. You're good, you're good. Go on, go on. Um, so I, I, I thought of how to end. That's perfect. I We're, don't know who's going to switch. That's okay. Adam, pop. If you want to occasionally swap the camera. Adam, you're in the hot seat now, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. All it is is one, two, three, and four. Yeah. Go to well, different cameras, and you're good, good to go. We're, uh, we're giving, <laughs> as, as the salt and syllables and the everything else that we've given Adam as a title, we're now giving him the official title, because Trev's got to hop out really quick for an appointment. We're giving him the official title of... Uh, grammatical yeah. gatekeeper. Grammatical gatekeeper slash ones and twos tapper. So that's what we're doing today. So thank you, thank you. Yeah, all it is, you see that's that Dell monitor right in front of you? Mm -hmm. Those are all one, two, three, and four across the bottom. The screen in the upper right-hand corner is the main screen that everybody can see. That's all you got to know. So if you go to, I think, I don't even remember which ones we have. So number two is probably overhead, I want to say. And then number three is more likely either my computer or number four is my computer. And then this one to the heat press. So we can get that heat press camera going. Uh, on over to the press so you guys can see what we're doing. So what was the first layer that you laid down there? So the first layer is Galaxy Black Glitter. Um, I chose it over the regular black glitter because it gives a little bit more pop. There's some more okay. color in it, and I just felt like it was better than just a flat black glitter. I like that. I like that a lot. All right, so back to you. Back to you. So you were, you said that you have always been the kind of kid that wanted to mimic artwork and, and mimic the things around you, but I right. also know you to be a graffiti artist as well. Yes. and create really, really awesome graffiti art. So how did you get started in that? Like, where did you get the bug to start going into, like, the world of graffiti? Um, so this is still staying within the uh, cartoon and anime realm. There's a, there's a show from the late 90s, early 2000s called Samurai Champloo, and it's, okay. it's a 26-episode-long anime season. Yeah. And uh, there was an episode in there that showcased graffiti. Yeah. And I just, at that point, I was like, okay, yeah, whatever they're doing is, is what I want to do, too. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Nice. You like how see how Lisa randomly pops in because she already I, knows I, 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 either somebody <laughs> ran down and was like, go down there and save him, or she's coming down to be so sweet and thank you so much. So Lisa is now hanging out with us on the live. The mic right there, Lisa, is uh, is, is live for Hello, you. Hello, everybody. <laughs> we got a bunch of people popping in and out, but that's the fun part, right? We can be crazy and kooky and still have some really fun artwork and stuff like that. But, um, okay, so you're doing right now, you got that hoodie that you're working on. You're working on, obviously, putting your layers together. Uh, right now, I'm just laying down the middle portion of my design. I need to let that metal cool a little bit. And now I did go a little rogue with this one. I know that you're doing some easy weed and adhesive on some of your jerseys, so I went right. opted into just metal. Um, and I did opt into doing the puff metallic as well. I tried that on another one, which turned out really, really cool mm -hmm. um, as well. So I'm just laying down that center, that center S, making sure that cools off enough so we can get a solid peel. And you're just hammering away there. I'm trying. Yeah. Where, Cortez, where are you from? Are you from I Michigan am, originally or no? No, no I am not. I'm not from Michigan. Um, I am from a little place in Missouri called Poplar Bluff. Okay. So if there's anybody in the comments from Bluff or anywhere from Missouri, hello, hello. Nice. Yeah, well, I think we did have one person, right, Adam, that popped in, at least that said, confirmed with us that they were from Missouri, too. Yes, they did. I'm trying to remember or find that city. But, yes, we do have someone from Missouri here. Nice. Very, That's very nice. cool. Awesome sauce. So, what is take us take us on a take us on a journey for Cortez? What what are some hobbies that Cortez does outside of? Well, obviously, I'm going to say outside of artwork in general too. Um, so outside of artwork, I I'm a big gamer. Well, I don't okay. want to say big gamer. There's only one game I play, but I <laughs> I, I, right, I play I play it all the time. It's called Rainbow Six Siege. Okay. Um, it's tactic, it's strategy. You're going to kind of it's it's chess, but in a video game. I love it. So. I love it. I actually, I remember playing like the original Rambo games and, uh, and like, I don't know. I just, I never got into it after like PS4. Okay. And then I ended up, then I was one of those kids that ended up switching to like Call of Duty. And so yeah. I feel like I'm, I'm definitely not saying tried and true because there used to be, remember Metal Gear Solid? Yeah, Metal I Metal Gear Solid, there was SOCOM, US Navy SEALs was another like game similar to that, but uh -huh. it was like very interactive. You know what I mean? And, like, you had to... <laughs> I, I, was, I got the game when I was, like, I don't know, nine years old right. at the time. And you got, like, a little headset with the game, and you had yep. to, like, give voice commands for them to do stuff. So yeah. I'm, like, nine, I'm, like, extraction! Get to the extraction point! You know what I mean? It was it was a good time. Games so. with comms, though, are so much fun, because even, yeah. though, even though it can be toxic at times, you know, being able to communicate with somebody that you're yeah. playing with is, is pretty fun. Now, do you play online a lot? Dude. I do. That's okay. that's the only thing I do is oh, really? online. Yeah, I so, play with some um, some randoms. I'll look for some groups to play with. But if it's not some randoms, it's always some IRL. So. Nice, nice. I like that. That's cool. I think it's a cool way to. Honestly, I know it's I know it's weird for some people, but it's also a cool way to meet people. I think. Yeah, it is. You know what I mean? Especially that are like minded and have uh, have kind of the same similar interests. You know. What's up, Adam? You got something over there? I do have a question um, from a Emily Cargetta. Okay. Um, Sounds familiar. Never heard of her. Yep. Hey, how you doing? Thanks for watching. <laughs> All right, what's up? <laughs> Cortez, what are your favorite materials to combine together? Ooh, I like that. Um, hmm, that is a good question. I think if I had to choose, and I don't know if it's a, I don't know if I'm going to get looked at weird because it's not like a manly thing, but I do think strip flock, glitter, and puff would probably be my best. Yeah, that's a solid. My that's a solid favorite three. combination of materials. Yeah. I like that. Very cool. All right. As you can see, layer one. How you doing over there on the switcher, Lisa? Uh, good. Wait, let's see. What are some people? Let's see what the people upstairs are texting you right now, because I know they're yelling at you. Uh, no, they're not. I'm watching. Oh, and delayed. For, is it weird? So if you guys don't know this, when you're in the room, you guys see everything about 15 to 20 seconds behind. So it is really interesting if you... Uh, if you see us interact in a weird way before you hear the comments, sometimes that happens too. So, all right. Um, okay, so another thing too uh, that awesome. I think is really interesting, like I said, uh, Lisa, on the bottom row right there, it'll say all four cameras, they're in order. So one, two, three, four. And then your upper right-hand monitor is the what they're seeing, the preview. Yep, yep, yep. Just so you have it, sorry. You, I had to give you the debrief too. I gave Adam the debrief right before you came in. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, okay, so you do uh, a little bit of graffiti art as well. Now, I noticed for you a lot of times you utilize, and this was something we talked about with Andrew, and we talked about on, uh, on Tina's Weeks as well, mm -hmm. you guys are really good at utilizing the actual fabric color or the garment itself uh, as part of the artwork and to, to keep that a little bit light, but I also know that you're a screen printer. So yes. does that come from a little bit of experience in screen printing of trying to lighten the load, or is it something that you learned when you started getting into like... No, screen printing definitely taught me how to use garment colors as mm -hmm. a secondary color yeah. uh, in order to save money, material, inks, you know, yeah, whatnot. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's helped me ever since. I don't see any problem in it. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Very cool. And so being a, being a screen printer, I mean, do you do a lot of like, in per, like personal outside of work as well, do you do a lot of incorporation where it's like screen print and heat transfer material? I haven't done too much of that yet, mm -hmm. uh, but I've been experimenting with uh, a little bit of strip block and easy weed, or uh, nice. yeah, strip block, easy weed, and then a screen print. Nice. Yeah, there's a lot of really, really cool, just so you guys know too, we have a lot of what you guys see um, on our graphics team, that or that you see publicly out there that our graphics team has done, but then there's all these like hidden little gems that they're like testing and working on. And nobody ever will tell me what they're working on because they know I'm going to end up bringing it to a live. And I'm going to tell you guys too soon before we make sure that it works for you. But there is some really, really cool, I mean, much like this. So for people out there, what we're doing right now, what Cortez is doing in this project that I'm kind of doing secondary to him is multi-layering different materials. So for him, he already laid out the materials he's using. For the jersey itself, I opted into utilizing uh, Easy Weed Sublock. Or, and uh, the Sublock product itself or anything that's like synthetically dyed in materials or anything that's like a sublimated garment, that sublock is going to help that dye migration of that dye from actually coming through that first layer. So I'm utilizing the sublock. And then after that, I'm using a layer of strip block. Hence why I have Cortez on, because he's a strip block king around here. And then I coupled it with, uh, instead of doing easy weed adhesive and foil for this one, um, or he has a really, really great gradient print, uh, our full color print on his, I'm utilizing our uh, our metal uh, material as well, just as an accent to the top layer itself. What's up, Adam? Uh, we actually have two questions here from YouTube. Okay. Uh, question one, where can people find that design that you're working on right now? Um, so you can find it on Leonardo. I did just get it uploaded this morning. Nice. Uh, but yes, it is on Leonardo to use. We, that was actually was a question I had for you, too, is if they want this design, can they access it? Yes, they can. And it was a really easy cut, too, guys. Like, this one, I mean, it seems, I get when we apply, sometimes the way that we apply materials um, might seem like there's a lot of steps. But the, this particular jersey is just three simple cut files. I mean, it's not really much um, to do to actually accomplish this. So the cool part is, and one thing I've noticed about you, too, when you are designing uh, I, I don't want to be disrespectful when I say this, but the designs themselves are done in a simplistic way so that when you go to the application, it's very easy to get through that process quickly. Right, right. So I think a lot of people, if they saw that design, most people would tell themselves, well, I'll just do screen print transfers or I'll do DTF for that, when they're not going to get the shimmer of the glitter. They're not going to get the gradient of um, like the print that you have on there that's so consistent. And I think that a lot of people don't realize that this artwork sometimes is very simple. Yeah. It's just how you create your artwork, you know, personally that, that makes it all the difference. What's up, Adam? Uh, second question um, for Cortez. Mm -hmm. Can you explain what you are doing with the wooden block there? Uh, so... Where did I yeah, put it? Right here. Sorry, I was, <laughs> I was using it just now. So this actually is a... Granite, yeah, block, um, and I'm using it to <clears throat> just cool the material and the carrier sheet. That way, I can work with it and peel it e easier and oh. faster. Um, because some of the material, some of the vinyl, is temper or heat sensitive, cold and you peel. can't, yep, right, cold peel, cold yep, yep. peel. You can't peel that carrier sheet until the vinyl itself is cool. So I use a cooling block or piece of granite sample, <laughs> and I just try to cool the carrier sheet and the vinyl at the same time. Yeah. Which definitely seems like it helps speed up the process yep, quite a bit, too, for you. It's nice. All right, so now this is the hard part, which I've noticed everybody when they were making their uh, their shirts for the show. <laughs> Hardest part was, like, you can put what, the S on one, or on, in the middle, on the seam, and then you can go ahead and put half of it down, but then you got to figure out how to align the rest of it. Right, so gonna, right. 
attempt that one right now. All right. Let's see. Go ahead and lay this piece down here. Oh. Very cool. We got any other questions coming in, Adam? And while, while you're looking for questions really quick, I just want to point something out to on this garment while we're while I'm already applying it. So this this S right here is really, really close. It's it's directly on a seam. And then the ER in this design is really close to the seam. So sometimes it's hard to maneuver and get a good full press. However, the SI being that it's a little bit skinnier is going to allow me to press directly on top of the entire design. I don't really have to move around and I'm not hindered by the seam. But if you guys did notice, when you do have a seam to a garment um, or you have like in Cortez's case, he's got a hood on his garment. He's also got some thick stitching uh, that's a part of the actual hoodie itself. It's always great to use a pressing pillow, making sure that you have something that you're pressing on. It's going to cause a little bit resistance to the actual uh, material. Or, I mean, uh, cause a little resistance either the press or the home iron, but more importantly, it's going to allow buttons, seams, stitches, hoods, stuff like that to really give an impression into the pad itself, which will give you a really nice even press uh, along the way. But because I'm going to press directly on the table for this one, I actually don't need that, uh, the pressing pillow. Oh, and we got something. Lisa's week brought up a topic that I got to address with everyone. We've had more than one person ask <laughs> about this. Uh, because I ended up using um, a cover sheet, and we used cover sheets on the live. There has been a lot of questions and a lot of people asking, uh, well, hey, I've gone to Michael's, Joanne, I've gone to my local reseller, distributor, and I keep asking for this cover sheet, and they don't know what the heck I'm talking about. So I want to make something very clear. When we say cover sheet here at Caesar, or when I'm talking about a cover sheet, the distinction is whether we're using, what kind of material is this without saying the T word? Because we can't say the T word. That's the reason I say cover sheet. Is I can't legally say the T word. However, uh, we'll call it grill paper. You guys know what I'm talking about. Right? Start the T. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm either using <laughs> I'm either using a Caesar style grill paper cover sheet, or we're utilizing parchment paper, or we may be using butcher paper in that case. So if you ever hear us say cover sheet, we don't. There's nothing specifically called cover sheet, um, at least yet. Yawn. Upstairs. We already talked about it, uh, but. At the end of the day, it's either one of the three items. Or if you guys don't have access to a cover sheet and you don't have time to go out to the store to buy parchment paper, and you really don't have time for all that stuff, most people have a shirt or the garment that they're decorating. Just give it a little flip over your design and press material onto your carrier itself. It still acts as a cover sheet. It's just a barrier between your actual design uh, itself and your platinum, either your heat press, home iron, whatever heating element that you're utilizing. So I just had to make that distinction because after our live, we got a lot of questions or we got a few questions on it. So I want to make sure that people knew. <clears throat> All right. How many layers is that one? Um, did, you get a, did you get an accurate count on them yet? It's, it's only one layer uh, across the whole garment, yep. but I just have multiple materials that butting up them. next to each other. So that's actually a, that's actually something that I think is really smart to uh, to explain as well. You said it's all one layer, um, right. all the material. Or I mean, all the materials are one layer. Explain what you mean by that. So in the screen printing world, I guess the term would be uh, butt registration. But here I've heard the term kiss cut. Mm -hmm. And all that is is your image is all one image. If anything, you would think it was layered. But because everything is touching, everything is just one solid layer. So you don't have this huge chunk on your back or in front of you. Perfect. Your garment. Yeah, a lot of our folks, too, in the groups, uh, as well as out there as well, might know that as, like, fake layering um, as well. So if you're not familiar with fake layering, head over to the Caesar North America website at CaesarNA.com. Go over to the blogs, and Lily did an incredible blog a couple years, a few years back now, on how to fake layer utilizing glitter as that technique. So, all righty. Adam, what do we got over there? We got any more questions chiming in? Uh, we do have a question from Christine uh, from just a minute ago. Uh, she was wondering what Cortez was doing with the gold. Um, so I'm using gold foil with adhesive. I'm not sure. A shot, but yeah. I'm using the gold foil um, to layer over my Easy Weed adhesive to then give me this gold foil effect on the back. The only reason I haven't done anything with it at the moment is because it is a cold peel. And when I mean cold peel, the foil is a completely cold, cold, yeah, completely cold peel. So I'm just yeah. waiting for it to cool down. Nice. Actually, do you want to bring that one off really? Because we can, we can pause in between. If you want to bring that one off, 
pull it down because I think everybody would love to see that reveal. It would be awesome. There we go. Got stuff out of your way. Here, I'll give you some room. They're done seeing my design. They want to see what you what you came up with. So just a little bit. There we go. Cool. So what he, what Cortez was explaining that he's done is is this portion that you see in the gold lens uh, style is actually cut with our easy weed adhesive. And that easy weed adhesive is obviously the adhesive that we use on all of our uh, products here at Caesar. It's just a clear adhesive. So what you're able to do, uh, and something that's really cool with that easy weed adhesive and foil technique, is that you can lay your design down and choose any type of craft foil um, that will allow you to then peel it off. And the only thing that remains is where the actual design is or the easy weed adhesive. Good to go. Look at that. Actually, hold on for that one. We're going rogue today. <laughs> no, we're going rogue. I want to get close to this one. Or actually, you know what? Let's just do this. Let me go ahead and make a quick adjustment. Keep on that overhead cam mm -hmm. there, Lisa. I'm going to make a quick adjustment here. We're going to get really, really nice up close and personal with that one. Organize that. There we go. And then we're going to head back on over to that camera that just popped up. There we go. Let's get, there you go, Cortez. Now you can peel that one. There you go. <clears throat> so as you can see, as he's peeling that off, everything where the easy weed adhesive uh, is will remain, or will, will take off, obviously, that foil and give you a really, really awesome shimmer, really cool shine. We can hop up to the overhead, too, Lisa, again. <clears throat> but yeah, so maybe while it's laid out too, go over all of the products that you use, because there is quite yep. a bit in here, and I know to most people, again, they're like, this is so much to put mm -hmm. in, but it's a very, the way that you laid this all out is really simply done. Yeah. So yeah, for the rope, I've got uh, the inside is a strip block white. Uh, the outside of the rope is, I want to say, neon blue glitter. Um, you've got your blue metal underneath the... Easy weed adhesive and gold foil. And then for the print itself, it is a color print Aurora. Nice. That is awesome. Yeah, this looks really, really killer. All right, cool. Now, uh, you're going to be doing the front of that one, but what we'll do for everybody, we'll wrap. Well, no, you know what? No, you guys want to see the rest of this project. You don't want to run away from this. So we're going to actually watch you kind of complete the rest of this as we chat a little bit more. I'm going to readjust this camera. Right. Lisa on uh, the heat press. There we go. There we go. That looks good. <clears throat> and then while you're doing that, um, mm -hmm. my computer is plugged in. Yeah. Why don't we go you, on over Lisa. really quick, Lisa, to um, Leonardo, to my computer. And I'm going to actually show you guys a really quick tutorial while uh, Cortez is kind of lining up all of, his, uh, all of his stuff here on exactly... Um, kind of how this design was created and how you can simply design uh, these. So I'm going to bring up actually the baseball jersey file I had earlier. Do I have it in here? No. All right, I'll upload it really quickly. Oh, you said it's in Leonardo already, right? Mm -hmm. You already yep. put it in there? Okay, cool. I totally missed that one. So so let's go baseball. Um, do you remember what you categorize it as? Um, baseball. Is oh, right there. There it is. I was like, I knew, I knew I could keyword it at least. All right, so here is the entire cut file, as you guys can see on screen. And I'm going to actually ungroup this cut file so that you can see some of these other elements. Maybe a little bit tougher to see, which this one right here, we'll just make it black for people. There we go. So we can start one of two ways with this project. And actually what I'm going to do, it might be sacrilege to a lot of people here, but I'm going to go ahead and actually delete most of this design so I can kind of recreate it for you to get an understanding of how this design works. So we're going to start with the base layer of our design itself inside Leonardo. And if you guys uh, do get into Leonardo and you're able to access this design, you can do it the exact same way. I'm just welding the Caesar, the 24, and the Leonardo together um, so they're th three separate elements, and in this case, there's four separate elements because we obviously have the crust um, as well here. So I'm going to show you on all of these together because it's going to make it a lot easier, but this is the smallest element. So when we are layering uh, multiple designs and we are adding a cut contour, the point of the cut contour is to grow bigger 
than the actual design. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight everything, go on down to my build contours, and then I'm gonna select editable artwork. Now what this is gonna basically do is once I'm done and I'm satisfied with the results of this, I can go ahead and hit apply and it's already going to create that, um, that cut file for me, that SVG or vector file. Um, so what I'm gonna do is let me go in and just really, really dive deep into one of these. So I'm gonna utilize uh, the I and the S's here in this, the word Caesar. And all I'm gonna do first, before I do anything, because the word is the, all the design is in black, my contour will be in black. I'm gonna go ahead and change that color just so I can see what I'm working with. Now, now that I changed the color, I'm going to include holes, which will then ensure that if there's any cavities that those are included as well. And then I can simply take my contour or my offset amount and change that and adjust it until I get the desired width of that cut contour. So let's go ahead and do full screen. Now you can see there's the black this is part of the design with the red uh, cut contour that's around it. Now, we're not going to stop there. So I'm going to hit apply, and then I'm going to go to my layers panel, and I see all of the, the elements that are in black. Uh, what I'm going to do, because I want to cut this whole file together, I'm going to highlight all of the same color shapes, hit weld, so that now I'm only working with two separate layers. I have my black layer and my red layer. Okay. The last step that I need to do to do this three-step design that Cortez had created is select my bigger contour of the two. So in this case, it's the red layer. I'm going to go back to that contour tool, and now I can hit include holes again. As you can see in the center of the fort, the R, inside the crest when I hit include holes, it now adds a cut line in there. Select editable artwork, and then again, I want to just change this to a separate color outside of the black and red. And again, this does not mean that this has to be the end result of my design. This just is a way for me to show you guys the different layers that make up this one piece of artwork. So I'll select the green. And then again, like I did before, I'm going to get going really, really tight to part of the design so I can understand how big my offset amount is. Um, are you a uniform kind of guy with offset? Like if you do a contour at, say, like 0.56, you'll make sure the other ones are all 0.56 as well? I do. Okay. So some are like that where they'll you know, create uh, the contour is the exact same. It's uniform. It looks way, way clean. Uh, but then there are some where you might want to do a drop shadow. So I don't need to add as much of a contour because I'm going to be shifting that down to be or include as part of my design. So with that, we're just going to add another contour that we're comfortable with. Hit apply. And then just like that, as I highlight over the crest, you can see now I have not only my front layer, which in this case for us, or at least in the jersey that I had made, was gold. So trained that to gold. Second layer, which was red in mine, and then the last layer, which was white for my design that I did. Uh, oh, I can't say my design. Your design that I recreated here, sorry. <laughs> but I'm going to use gray so that you guys can see it on screen as well. No, now it's my design. You put yeah. it in Leonardo, so now it's I yours? just changed yeah, it. It's your design. That's it. This is all me. I did it all. No big deal. No, I'm just kidding. But now you can see we created three simple layers, three simple contours, and now you can create a beautiful, beautiful jersey like the one that's on the rack here, the one that Cortez is wearing, or the one that I just finished up. <clears throat> there we go. Where you can see in the 24, those now three different layers in white, red, and then in the gold itself. You all done with yours? I am. Let's check it out, man. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, yeah, sorry. This is my front. That's awesome. This is all strip flock too. Red and the green is strip flock. That's really, really cool. The white is rainbow uh, glitter, rainbow white glitter. Nice. And then <clears throat> also this, you don't have to know it offhand. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how big, like how tall the text was or how wide the text was on this? Uh, the text, it was 3.5 inches wide. Okay, because here's the thing, is that with all of this text in here and all those tiny pieces, mm -hmm. guys, this is glitter that he was using. So as you know, if you're utilizing, uh, you know, the traditional craft cutters out there, sometimes glitter can gum up potentially in your blade. Sometimes it can uh, cause, uh, it doesn't give you longevity in your cuts long term. Uh, and a lot of times it just doesn't cut right at all. But this, you just using the Romeo, did you use Romeo or Juliet? For this Juliet. One? Juliet for this one? Okay, cool. But using Juliet for this one and same with Romeo, you can see how detailed you can get and how fine you can get in some of your artwork itself, which I think is really, really cool. I just always think it's important for us to, to point it out, but let's check mm -hmm. out the back one more time. 
Look at that. That's incredible. Very, very cool. Well, make sure that you drop some hearts, drop some likes, drop all of the love in the comments uh, for this artwork. Again, these uh, the jersey itself is available, and Leonardo, this is available as well, right? Yep. Perfect, perfect. So both pieces of artwork done by Cortez here uh, are available inside Leonardo Design Studio, so make sure that you get inside Leonardo Design Studio. Make sure you try it out. Uh, try it for yourself, and I, I mean, quite honestly, between us, we would love to see even the color schemes that you guys come up with. You know, take the art and make it your own, just like you saw, I added gold in mine as opposed to doing a little different than what Cortez had on his jersey itself. Uh, but with that, do we got any comments? Do we have any questions? We have a lot of comments. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's go through them. Let's go through them. <laughs> um, there are so many people saying uh, it's beautiful. They awesome. love it. It looks awesome. Um, someone wants to know where they can get the anchor design, but I believe you just mm -hmm. answered that. Yep. Um, we're on Facebook. Here, wait, here's a little tip for you guys, too. You want the anchor design? You don't have Leonardo Design Studio? Head over to CaesarNorthAmerica.com or CaesarNA.com. Over on the Cutters tab, there is a Leonardo Design Studio link or a landing page. Download Leonardo Design Studio for free, and then you're able to access the artwork as well and create. The only thing you need is a cutter to cut, but at the end of the day, you can at least access that artwork, manipulate it, get to play with Leonardo, and get a chance to, to see and obviously be able to either recreate or create your own artwork. All right, sorry, Adam. Oh, you're good. <laughs> um, I just have all these like little things. I'm like, oh, yeah, we should do that. We should talk about that. Uh, one more question. Can you zoom in um, or get a, a good look at the uh, the final the final piece there? This one right here? Yep. On this one? All right. You can go to overhead, Lisa, if you don't mind. I'm going to center that one up, and then we're going to get dangerous in here. I'm on a ladder, people. <laughs> no, don't even think about switching it. Oh, she didn't take a picture of it. <laughs> Later in the group, you guys will see me <laughs> sitting on a ladder. All right. So let me go ahead and zoom real tight into that design. If that's all in focus for you. What about that, Lisa? That looks good? Cool. So just like that, now you can see how beautiful this is. This is awesome. Thank I you. I love thank that. You. And then I also love the front of this one. Now, I'm going to tell you right now that we're not going to give away this hoodie specifically for this one. Um, or the jersey, but what we'll do is we'll recreate these for you guys on a couple of garments upstairs um, so that you guys have these as well. And we'll make sure that over on Friday, uh, being that I won't be here, we'll have a static post with the winner's names. We'll make sure that we throw in uh, a little, you know, little gift for you, a little something for you in the giveaway for those, uh, those winners as well. So uh, if you'd like to know more about, obviously, Leonardo Design Studio, if you'd like to know more about Cortez, there's also going to be a video coming out. Uh, very, very soon. If it hasn't already, have we dropped this video yet? Or that drops this week, right? Okay, cool. So this week it'll, it'll go out. I've seen it so many times before. <laughs> I'm like, wait, did we put it out yet? So anyways, you also get to learn a little bit more about Cortez. You get to see that beautiful mural. I know that he's going to go snap a photo, post it in the group for you guys. Uh, but if you have any questions, if you need anything, as we always say, info at CaesarNA.com. Uh, don't worry about any of that, Lisa. We'll, we'll post it in after. You're good. <laughs> Info at CaesarNA.com. If you are over on YouTube, head over to Facebook. Make sure that you join the Caesar North America support group so you can see that awesome mural. You can also see and in, uh, get involved with more of the giveaways, and it's a great community of like-minded creators that are all making together, learning together, struggling together sometimes, as we always do. Uh, but ultimately, it's a really cool community. So Caesar North America support over on Facebook. Um, but like we say every week, Thank you guys so much for hanging out. You got any last minute things? Um, shout outs? Yeah, hit shout out. Yes, dude. Yes, do some shout outs. That's perfect. <laughs> all right, so quickly, I want to give a shout out to my fiance, Sydney, um, all the entire graphics team, the entire Caesar team, because if it wasn't for y'all, I wouldn't be here. And this just, it just means more than anything. It means more than you guys could even possibly fathom. Um, but yeah, uh, my IRLs, Vandy, Darian, Zeke. Know you are you know where you're at thank you guys thank nice you. nice i like it i like it well like we say all the time thank you so much for watching we love you happy crafting and well we'll see you next time uh and now this is the time where you see me sprint around to uh turn off the camera so cortez is gonna entertain you for two seconds Boop. <laughs> bye bye